lot of times when I go into classrooms, I see, I see students writing H's above the, the digit in the hundreds place and a T above the digit in the tens place and an O above the digit in the ones place. And it's pretty clear that they've been sort of taught to do that. Um, and, and that's certainly one component of a place value understanding. Um, but I don't think by itself it's, it's really the target for what we're trying to um, get our students to understand about place value and about our number system that's written in, in base 10. One main question, which is um, what constitutes a uh, strong place value understanding, uh, particularly in kindergarten, first and second grade students? Um, and we'll kind of look at sort of five understandings that we've identified as a team um, that we think are really important um, for, for young students to engage with and think about. So the, the team here at Teaching is Problem Solving had the opportunity to get out and work with students in individual settings and in classrooms as we were thinking about and making sense of these place value ideas. And this isn't everything. We don't think that what we're going to talk about is all of place value understanding, right? This is, this is what is in the literature as understandings that are kind of well documented and that are backed up with evidence. I think it's, I think it's important for us to note that um, while, while we see place value as a much larger thing than just identifying the value of a, of a digit in a certain place, that is a really important understanding for kids to have. We just don't think it's limited to just that one thing. So we're going to start by taking a look at the first understanding, which is sort of the significance of the position um, of the digits in a number, right? Like that the number, the digit three being in the tens place means there are three tens or there are 30. Okay, I was interviewing a student named Katie who had just counted a pile of the 35 cubes and written 35 on the paper. And then I asked her some questions about each of the digits in that number. Okay, does this part of the 35? Have anything to do with how many cubes you counted? Yes. Tell me more about that. The ten, because the, the, the three part of the thirty-five counts as the tens place. So if I, I didn't have ten, there would just be thirty-five for me. There wouldn't be anything else to do with the three. Is a, this is a little bit more robust of an understanding than just identifying the three in the tens place, as we've kind of talked about. This is sort of connecting the three in the tens place to the sort of set of cubes in, in, front, of, in front of Katie. So let's take a look at um, another understanding, understanding two in this module of, of what we see as a strong place value understanding in, in kindergarten, first and second grade students. Um, that second understanding is a sort of grouping by tens concept um, in sort of our base ten number system. This idea that Ten ones is the same as one ten, and ten tens is the same as one hundred, and on and on and on. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna look at a student in this one um, who's doing a different task. So I showed Valerie this series of task cards that had pictures that kind of resembled base ten blocks. There were some sticks of ten and some loose ones, and then some on the later cards there were some hundreds. So on this card, Valerie's going to see. Uh, a representation of 100, a 10 by 10 set of squares, and two tens, and then four loose squares. And I ask her, how many small squares are here? And he this is what she did. How many cubes would you have there? Okay, that's a really great thing. When we do these math problems together, is it okay if I turn this video camera on? So that, how did you say it? 124. Tell me how you figured out 124. Because since there's ten tens in this, then this is already one hundred. One hundred plus twenty, which is these two sticks, is one hundred twenty. And one hundred twenty plus these four is one hundred twenty-four. So she didn't immediately know that that 10 by 10 group of squares was 100. She counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But she knew 10 tens, 100. That's 100. And so that's that, that's that idea of that grouping. She was able to put together those ideas that those 10 tens were 100 and that already that those 10 ones were 110. So that's great. That's yeah. just what we're looking for. Yeah. It does seem like Valerie has a fairly robust understanding at this point with this task card of, of how to make how this organization of 124 can be can be counted fairly efficiently. 
So, you know, another understanding of place value is for students to be able to notice patterns in our base 10 number system. So first, that's, there's that idea of just having our counting sequence that we use the same 10 digits, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0, to make any number. And that when you're counting and moving through the counting sequence, they just repeat over and over and over in any one place. And so that's a really neat and interesting thing for kids to notice and to start to use to kind of organize their thinking about how numbers get bigger or smaller. I think another really interesting uh, pattern that kids notice is uh, if they're trying to solve a problem like 20 plus 40, they might say, we often hear kids say 2 plus 4 is, two plus four is 6, so 20 plus 40 is 60. And often they know that because 2 tens plus 4 tens is 6 tens, 6 tens is 60. Yeah, there's also this other place value idea that kids engage with when they're learning to add and subtract multiples of 10 from a given number, right? If you're subtracting 10 from 34, you notice that the, the digit in the ones place doesn't change. It's the tens place that changes. Or if you're adding 30 to a number like 34, the tens place is the only place that changes when you, when you solve that problem. It's also been interesting for me working with third graders that they use these other patterns that they've learned previously about 10 tens is 100. And um, they're often really surprised to see that that pattern continues into much larger numbers, that, uh, you know, ten hundreds is one thousand. That's a big surprise to them. I think, I think in the past I've always thought that that, that was understood, that, that they would generalize that without having to build and see it. And uh, these, you know, third graders really, that it was a big surprise to them that that pattern does continue beyond two-digit numbers or three-digit numbers. But maybe that's where place value understanding really picks up and gets, okay, it's time to get, it's time to really sort of dial this in and, and teach the conventions of this and teach the, the sort of base 10 number system. This fourth understanding that we're going to explore now is about uh, the idea that numbers can be represented with um, different but equivalent groupings. Um, this idea that 35 can be seen as three tens and five ones. That's a really convenient way to think about 35 for students a lot of times. However, we also know that sometimes kids will want to think about 35 as two tens and 15 ones, or, or other ways to think about the number 35, not just based on the sort of t number of tens and number of ones in, in that number. But something that's not quite as obvious, that, that is, is much more complicated for young children to understand, who maybe see that 35 can be thought of as three tens and five ones at a glance, that a number like 135 can also be thought of as not just one 100, three tens and five ones, but 13 tens and five ones, right? Um, or perhaps one 135 ones or something like that. But, but seeing all these connections among these numbers um, uh, is, is really a non-trivial uh, another non-trivial leap in understanding of, of place value. This, this idea of thinking about numbers in these different ways is convenient for students. The flexibility in thinking about 135 as 100 and two tens and 15 ones or some other convenient decomposition, that's important because it allows them to have access to solving computation problems, right? That's the reason we want them, that's one of the reasons we want them to think about these numbers in different groupings. And that leads us right into the last understanding, understanding five that we'll explore in this module, which is um, how students use place value knowledge to leverage uh, flexible methods for addition and subtraction. Uh, all right, so we're going to watch a video of we're going to watch a video of Drew now, a second grader. Um, Drew had sixteen cubes in front of them. There was a group of ten in a cup, and then six extra ones. And we're going to ask Drew if he were to get twenty-five more cubes, how many cubes he would have then. Um, let's pretend I'm going to give you twenty-five more cubes. How many cubes would you have then? 41. 41. How did you get 41? Uh, uh, 10 plus 20 equals 30. But then you have 5 plus 6 and 5 plus 5 equals 10. And you have an extra. So then you add so you carry the 10 into the cup. And then you get 40. Oh, so you were seeing it like making another cup with those extra 10? Okay.
things I noticed really is how quickly he added 16 and 25 in his mind within two to three seconds, something like that, had the right answer. It took him longer to explain what occurred up there, but a lot occurred up there as far as sort of um, adding the, the 20 and the 10 and adding the, the 5 and the 6 by, by decomposing the 6 into 5 and 1 and doing the two fives and so on first. Um, and he also used, you know, notice he, he worked from left to right in place value instead of from right to left in doing this. These conversations are fun because every time we talk about place value, it, it, it just becomes more and more clear to me that, that these ideas of in, embedded in our base 10 number system, that almost the whole world uses this Arabic numeral system with place value ideas and, and based on 10, um, is multifaceted, and for those of us who have had some a fair understanding of these ideas for decades, we for, we think we forget what it's like to not know that. Um, and I think these five understandings uh, help us as as teachers of children to really develop a, a better perspective on their view and and their understanding of these ideas. Um, and it makes it really fun to then talk to children and watch what they do and, and use what we see and observe and, and, and what they show us to, to understand where they're at in that journey as, as they develop a more robust and more integrated understanding of, of numbers and place value. So in the next two modules, uh, we're going to investigate a framework for how students understand place value and explore classroom applications through viewing video from a classroom working on some of these place value concepts. Mm -hmm.